All right, let's talk about osteopetrosis. Osteo means bone, petrosis refers to rock-like. So this is a disorder in which you have abnormally thick, heavy bones. It's an inherited defect in bone resorption. Now, if you remember, bone formation is a balance between osteoblasts, which lay on bone, and osteoclasts, which resorb bone. Now, this balance is constantly occurring throughout life so that you're always laying down some bone and always resorbing some bone. Now, a defect in bone resorption in which you're constantly laying down bone and laying down bone but can't resorb it results in an abnormally thick and heavy bone. Now, despite it being abnormally thick and heavy, it fractures easily. Think of it like a piece of chalk. A piece of chalk is thick, but you can easily crack it. Now, this disorder is due to poor osteoclast function. It has multiple genetic variants. Most important is the carbonic anhydrase 2 mutation, which results in a lack of acidic environment that's required for bone resorption. An acidic environment is necessary in order to remove calcium to resorb bone. Now, in order to generate an acidic environment, the enzyme carbonic anhydrase is necessary. Carbonic anhydrase combines water and CO2 to make up H2CO3. Carbonic acid then breaks up into a proton and bicarbonate. Now, this proton, which is the acid, leaves the cells, and this is what creates the acidic environment necessary for bone resorption. If osteoclasts don't have the ability to generate th this acidic environment, they won't be able to resorb bone, and this is exactly what occurs in the carbonic anhydrase 2 mutation. The clinical features of osteopetrosis include bone fractures. Now remember, although it is the bone is thick, it's going to be very weak, hence it's more prone to fractures, and this is because there is no proper balance between the osteoclasts and osteoblasts, and in order to make strong bones, you need to have a balance between the osteoclasts and osteoblasts. Patients can also have anemia, thrombocytopenia, and leukopenia. So now, this occurs because the thickening of the bone replaces the medullary space, which is called a myelophysic process. Myelophysic process, which knocks out the ability for hematopoiesis. Hematopoiesis, which means generating blood cells. So if hematopoiesis is knocked out, individuals end up with anemia, low red blood cells, thrombocytopenia, low platelets, and leukopenia, low white blood cells. These individuals end up with extramedullary hematopoiesis, so this blood cells are going to be made outside of the bone marrow, either in the spleen or the liver. Patients can also develop vision and hearing impairment. This is due to the thickening of the bone that compresses the cranial nerves as they try to exit the skull, and hence they end up with these impairments of vision and hearing. Patients present with hydrocephalus. This is due to thickening of the bone at the foramen magnum. Patients can also develop renal tubular acidosis. This is when patients develop metabolic acidosis within the blood due to a defect in the tubules. This is seen with a carbonic anhydrase deficiency. Tubular cells have the ability to take water and CO2 to make H2CO3 in the presence of carbonic anhydrase, which catalyzes this reaction. Now, H2CO3 breaks into H plus and HCO3 minus. The hydrogen ion transfers into the lumen and joins with NH3 to form NH4. This is important because it can be excreted, getting rid of acid. When you get rid of acid, this results in a net gain of bicarbonate, which goes into the blood, maintaining pH of the blood. So it acts like a buffer. Now, if you don't have carbonic anhydrase, you won't be able to generate this acid, and therefore you won't be able to excrete this acid, and you won't be able to get the net gain of bicarbonate. So these individuals become acidotic. Now what is the treatment of osteopetrosis? The treatment would be a bone marrow transplant. Now you may ask, how would a bone marrow transplant help? Well, think of it this way. The problem in these individuals is that their osteoclasts are not functioning properly. Now an osteoclast is a macrophage in bones, and macrophages are derived from monocytes. Monocytes are derived from the uh, hematopoiesis process. Hence, a bone marrow transplant will give this individual the ability to make normal monocytes, hence generating normal osteoclasts and taking care of the problem. In summary, Osteopetrosis is an inherited defect of bone resorption that results in abnormally thick, heavy bone that fractures easily. Now, this is due to poor osteoclast function. 
This may be due to multiple genetic variants, one of which is the carbonic anhydrase 2 mutation that leads to loss of the acidic environment that is required for bone resorption. Now, clinical features include bone fracture, anemia, thrombocytopenia, and leukopenia with extramedullary hematopoiesis due to the bony replacement of the marrow, which we said is called myelophysic process. And these individuals present with vision and hearing impairment, hydrocephalus, and renal tubular acidosis, and the treatment is bone marrow transplant.